What would you like student doctors, nurses, and future healthcare professionals to remember from tonight when managing young RHD patients and families? My message would be that, you know, we focus tonight in this um, movie on diagnosis. That's, that's a critical step. But the next step for each one of us here, for the healthcare provider, is the ongoing care. And in a way, that's the more challenging bit. So how can we do that well? I think the message is to be kind. I think what, what our health systems need to engage, you know, you can put it in lots of different terms. You can call it cultural safety. You can call it all sorts of things. But we need kindness in our health systems. We need health systems that engage people on the terms that people need recognising the lives that people have that are so totally different from, the, you know, the lives of the privilege <coughs> that they're providing healthcare. Um, so be kind. But for, for those of you who are going to be the doctors of the next generation, yeah. I think that's the message I'd say to take home. I think a uh, message for, you know, help people here today is that I hope that the story has resonated with you and not just sort of raising your social conscious and, you know, it's, it's very emotional. I've, I've, this is the fourth, fourth time that I've watched it in a theatre and it doesn't get any easier. In fact, the tears flow more because um, you get quite intimate, uh, intimately knowing the families and uh, the people that are working on it. So uh, being kind to people, but really just, you know, what can you do differently? So you've come here tonight, you've watched the film. It's evoked so many emotions. Um, you know, celebration of Indigenous Australia, how beautiful the artwork and the rich culture and that, but the storytelling. But what, what can I do differently when I go back? And no, not, let's go one step further. What am I going to do differently? So I really challenge you to be kind, but really to get to know the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that you're going to be looking after, get to know their families. So, we always say that we want to move from the biological um, approach to health to more of the cultural approach. So make sure that really that you understand the cultural um, side of, of people that you're dealing with. Yeah, thank you. The sadness that you see on the screen tonight, but it's over, overwhelming. And I, I feel overwhelmed and I'm sure that many of you do as well. And uh, I think sometimes in the face of that, it can feel uh, too overwhelming. You can look at it and think, um, oh, this is uh, hopeless. Where, where do you go from here? But I hope that in that film, um, you saw real strands of hope in places where um, people haven't been willing to accept that this is just how it has to be, um, but to look and see that things can change. And uh, there are um, massive things that need to change, but then lots of kind of smaller things too. And it's a beautiful question to ask in terms of thinking through where do I fit in that and how can I make a bit of a difference? And I think some of the things you've heard already from Anna and Vicky really bring true. I, I think that um, communication is such an important part of uh, what medicine and healthcare provision entails. And we get it wrong a lot of the time. Communication needs to go both ways, and so um, the getting to know your patients and, and getting to know Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to, to listen and to hear what they have to say, I think is a really critical uh, part of being able to address issues like this. And you would have seen in the film hey, um, some of the disquiet, the sort of disgruntled feeling of, uh, of in trying to engage with a health system that doesn't hear, that doesn't recognise, that doesn't see. Um, and so being willing to pause and to listen and to hear and to and, um, do what you can to understand. But then also looking for ways to communicate um, really clearly. And, and again, often that's about just being prepared to sit and take time and to, and to listen and take on board and then to think through how to communicate things, to work with um, interpreters, to work with uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers who are able to take the messages and to translate them. Like some of the examples that you saw of Madame Greeter, of teachers even, and the traditional owners who would take the messages, understand them, and then be able to communicate them in a way that people would understand. And some of those um, kids that uh, we know really well in Madame Greeter, who uh, some years back started hearing 
the message about rheumatic heart disease, about this condition they've got, this condition that they might have had heart surgery for, but they were hearing about it in their own language literally for the first time in their life. And I think that's a massive lesson for me out of um, some of this experience over the last few years. Um, I would um, encourage the next generation of health workers, doctors, nurses, Aboriginal health practitioners to be brave and to be courageous. Um, we can solve rheumatic heart disease. Young children and families don't have to suffer these consequences. Um, we can prevent rheumatic heart disease together. The medical part is a simpler part and primarily Primarily, that's our role as doctors um, or future doctors, is to treat every single skin infection and to treat every single throat infection and not to normalize um, infections like scabies. Every single time a child has that condition, we need to push on and we need to keep addressing those really great basic um, medical conditions. So that's our job as doctors, is to prevent rheumatic heart disease in that way. But for, for those of you who are really courageous, then I would suggest to get involved in health advocacy. Because as much as we can do as doctors, really what will change and what will end rheumatic heart disease is policy changes, which go beyond healthcare, but really address the social determinants, the housing that we talked about, access to basic primary healthcare. So your, your task is big, but it is doable. So be courageous. Also listening to the patient, because sometimes you can think that with all your experience and all your understanding of this, that you can get things done just the way that you think. But sometimes being able to listen to the patient and understand that they understand their body better than you understand their body and it's just important to be able to listen to the patient as much as it is to rely on your own instinct.